Hey, what's going on, family? It's your man, Daryl the Second. I wanted to drop this word. Um, I just wanted to say that sometimes as a believer, you may find yourself feeling foolish. You may find yourself questioning yourself because when you walk by faith and not by sight, what you're pursuing has not yet been visible yet. And so sometimes you may appear to be odd to others and sometimes to yourself because your conventional mind will try to go against what the Lord may have revealed to your spirit. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Romans that the spirit and the mind also known as the flesh, are always at war with one another. And so I just want to encourage anybody today to feed your faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, but hearing by the word of God. And it's important to spend time in the word of God so that your faith can elevate and grow. Because what can happen is you can feel a sense of, um, well, worry, insecurity, fear, timidity, all these things. And what happens is you lapse, which you're human, you, you will do because you're not perfect. And you can end up compromising somewhere simply because your flesh or your lack of understanding um, makes you want to try to hurry God up on his promises, makes you want to try to do what God is supposed to do. And I've had instances in my life where people will recognize certain things I'm trusting and believing God for. And because the path I'm taking looks unconventional, looks weird, unorthodox, or many obstacles present themselves, you know, people will question you. And sometimes in my own mind, I'll question myself or I'll question God, like, Lord, Am I really hearing you? Am I going the right way? Even though I know I hear God, even though I know God is talking to me, as a human being, sometimes your faith becomes under attack. And so I just want to encourage you to spend time in his presence and spend time with his word, because when those moments of doubt come, you want to be able to recognize that it's just the enemy. It's just your flesh. And the beautiful thing about God is that he loves you so much that even when you waver, he'll help you. But he says without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because if you believe that he exists, then you believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that's why I say seek him, seek him. Because when you seek him, you will find him if you search with your whole heart. Um, the story of Abraham and Hagar, um, real quick, Abraham was called to be the forefather of the Jewish people. And he was told that he would have the entire lineage of Jews come from him, his loins, his seed, him. And he was in old age at the time. I think he was 70 when he heard this and his wife was up there with him. So he was kind of questioning this, but he followed God and by faith took God at his word. But there was a period where he and his wife kind of questioned this. And so he heeded his wife's voice and she suggested that he sleep with their handmaiden, an Egyptian woman, an Egyptian servant, Hagar. He did. And he had a child with Hagar, but that was not the promised child. And as a result, there was contention in the home. But years later, he, I think it was 13 years later, I believe. He had a child with um, Sarah and it was Isaac, the son to be. And um, even though he had the promise, which was a blessing up until that point in the, some of those years in the house, there was contention because he had this child with another woman. And that's what we can do. We can create unnecessary complications because we try to help the Lord. Now, God is gracious enough to still give us a blessed life, but we can open the door for unnecessary obstacles. And so just be mindful of that. Don't try to... Um, make everything happen. And if something comes in your life that's questionable, just go to the Lord and present it and say, Father, is this of you or is this of me? Is this of you or is my flesh? You may be waiting on a kingdom spouse and you may meet a great person, wonderful, but there may be that 1% in your spirit saying something's not right. And 99% looks perfect, but that one says something's not right. Go before the Father and say, Lord, is this of you or not? And I promise you, he'll let you know. Um, sometimes when we're in the moment, we can be distracted by our own desires that we try to block out the voice of the Lord, even though we can hear it clear as day. In fact, the book of Jeremiah 17 verse nine says the human heart is desperately wicked above all things who can know it. And so I encourage you on your journey of trusting God and whatever it is, put yourself in his presence because sometimes people will try to help and they will give you advice that is counterproductive to what the Lord is saying. Sometimes they're simply doing it because they mean well, or they could be used by the enemy. You don't know. And so you want to heed the word of God and take heed at what God has revealed to you. And if you are questioning, then go spend time in the presence of the Lord by yourself. You know, because when you're walking with the Lord, you're gonna stand out, you're gonna look weird, you're gonna be different at times. And it's gonna be tough sometimes because sometimes you're gonna feel like you're not relatable to other people. But just like the prophet uh, Elijah wanted to give up um, in a moment of challenge, God reminded him that there are 7,000 other prophets who have not bowed a knee to this false god, Baal. So you're not alone in your journey. You're not the only one going through it. In fact, I suffer too. There's no way I could share these things with you guys if I didn't go through it myself. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's absolutely no way. I struggle at times. I fall short in sin sometimes and I have to get back up and repent. I am far from perfect, guys. And I, I, I say that with transparency because I think that's the best way to be. Because 
The Bible says, um, uh, how's it go? Um, confess your faults one to another. It's important to be honest with each other and to be honest with God, because if you're not honest, you can walk in pride if you're not careful. So I try to humble myself and recognize my areas of shortcoming because I have them. I'm not perfect. Um, and so that's why I say in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. So cry out to God and he will help you to deal with your challenges. In fact, Jesus says, um, apart from me, you can do nothing because he is the true vine and we're simply a branch. We are the branch. In order to bear fruit, we must come from him. So I, I believe I'm almost done. Uh, there's another sermon I had to preach earlier this week, but I, I didn't get a chance to. And sometimes when you don't follow God's lead quickly, it's it's the time passes. That might have been what happened. Um, but I can say this, that you will stand out. Sometimes you will see be seen as odd because God will have you do things that are um, counter, in, counter to what you're accustomed to seeing, counter traditional. Um, there was a story in the Gospels where John the Baptist was proclaimed to be a baby. He was going to be born. He wasn't born yet. An angel came to his parents and told them about him. The mother was receptive, Elizabeth, but the the father, when he heard about it, he doubted it. And as a result, the, the angel Gabriel made him mute. And so when the time came for the child to be born, um, it was tradition to name the child after the father. But the mother and the father knew this child was going to be named John. And they were separate when the angel came to them, by the way. Um, so they went to the mother. She said, it's going to be John. And the community was against that. So they went to the father and he couldn't talk, but he wrote on a pad. His name was John. And then he suddenly can talk. And so I said that with obedience, just be obedient and be recognizing that sometimes you will stand out and you will appear to be weird opposed to what is expected from your peers. And just, it's okay. Just be who God made you to be. Also, this is my new chain I got from Minister Trish. It says Yahweh. It's a Hebrew. That's dope. I got another one too. But um, I just want to encourage you all today. I do know what it's like to suffer, to be challenged, to have difficulty. Because as a believer, we walk by faith and not by sight. You will have tribulations and you will appear weird. And sometimes you may even say to yourself, Father, am I really hearing you? Am I tripping? So that's all I wanted to say. I might have squeezed a little too much in. If I did, I'm sorry. I got to sometimes remind myself not to overspeak. Uh, but before I do conclude, I just want to say if there's anybody out there who doesn't have a relationship with God the Father... The only way you can have one with him is first to have one with his son, Jesus Christ. And this comes through faith in Jesus, a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross and that God the Father raised him back from the dead. Matter of fact, Easter, Resurrection Day, he came back. He died on Good Friday. He came back three days later. And so if you believe he died on that cross and rose from the dead and you want him to be your Lord and Savior, you just have to ask him in your heart. He died on the cross for you. He um came and lived a life where he never sinned, but he took all of our sins on himself. And so by putting your faith in him, you become a brand new creation. You're born again and you become righteous in the sight of the father, because it's not by your own merit that you become righteous, but it is by his faith, by his, his righteousness and what he did on that cross. And by putting our faith in him, that we become righteous. So believe in him, his blood washes us anew and we are accepted in the, uh, in the family of God. Now you will have persecutions. You will have challenges because he carried his cross. We have to carry ours. So understand, as a believer, you're going to have attacks at times and dislikes, but you will have him with you, his spirit, his presence, his company. You will have salvation as well. You will be entering into the kingdom of heaven. Your name will be written in the book of life. You won't go to hell. And so if you want to know them, him, excuse me, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you did that, like I said, your name is written in the book of life. There is a celebration of heaven on your behalf. Get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. I got to go. You be blessed. Be encouraged. My name is Daryl Alder II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and sometimes Twitter. Be blessed. Peace.